Guess who's back? Back again. Nord is back for the fourth time. My fucking god, we're back! Yo. Is here, which has got to be some kind of record for any care for, for any 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 uh, person who's not like a permanent fixture on the podcast. <laughs> Co-host for two episodes and now guest for two episodes. I mean, that's part of the benefit of, of making a bunch of characters. Uh, here, here we are in episode 67 of the Strip Poker Night of the Inventory podcast, where we talk about all the characters added to the game. And Nord always has something cooking. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm Spananon, your regular host. Uh, I'm here with my co-host, The Masp. Again, freshly rescued from Princess Peach's secret slide. Here, I'm here. Nickety snackety. Uh, Snickety snackety and hippity hoppity get off my fucking property anyway and then returning for the fourth time we we have my main account is a nord my main account is a ford because it's his fourth uh recent appearance he and he's here because line approach to making characters we have we have a uh, one of his projects to talk about who's joined the main roster today. We're still playing catch up and going through these relatively quickly, but I think uh, for the most part we've we've given them their their just their uh their 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 due uh, coverage in in previous outings. So we, this, this kind of ties a bow on the whole thing. Of course, you should go play all of these and fap to them, uh, even if you're not into men because their first character is a male Eat character. Aggressively, fap them. You know, expand your horizons. Help him, Fap. He only has one arm. Poor which I guess is all you need, but you could always use more. All right, all right. You, uh, Nord, would you would you like to talk about Dunbon from Xenoblade Chronicles and uh, how the project went now that he's on main and, and what you want to do with him going forward? Dunbon. How many characters are you up to, anyway? Um, I know my role says 10 plus. And I think they're going to stop counting after that. 9, 10, 11, I don't know, but Dunbon is one they of do them. Stop count- they do stop counting after 10. I, I-, I, th- <laughs> I think I've collectively written like 20,000 lines at least. Nice. God, God you, you both have like the 10, made 10 characters roll, and I'm stuck at the piddly little four I've had for you. Oh, oh, poor baby <laughs> with your 20,000 lines for character. It's just like, it's like, Listen. oh man, you guys have so many characters. As you just like, as one of them stands up and just like submerges the rest. Like, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. That massive throbbing clitoris of lines. You could yeah. have made the entire crew of like Vandred by now. It got the whole no, I'm, I'm, I've, I've outsourced that. <laughs> I'm crowdsourcing <laughs> that at the moment in, in bounties. I'm trying to get people to make all their crewmates so I can use them for epilogues and don't have to do it myself. Thank you very much for the, the model of, of uh, BC, by the way. They're, they're vice captain. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Do, you have a, do you have a picture of that, that you can post? Not one that is decent. Please, please join in on that. It'll probably still be going by the time this episode airs. My, my eternal thanks to that, and I will target Dunbon and other characters that you've made in exchange. I appreciate that. Filling time as I grab an image of BC. Damn. That's a super good model, man. You're welcome. Any reason why you picked her? I forget why I originally said I was going to make a model of her. I just remembered, oh yeah, I promised, I, you know, promised, said I would make a model of her months ago, probably over a year ago at this point. Back then, I don't think my Kisake skills were quite sharp enough, but I've improved. You have. And uh, now that I have, like, an, an updated May and Jura model to, to show off, I just, like, I just throw that at everyone who, who's expressed interest and say, "Here, here's the template." Oh yeah, absolutely. Like they, they all have. I hope that you know, expedited the process. It definitely did because it meant I had the proportions and the face in particular were just pretty much done. I did shrink her eyes a little bit, which took some effort because of just how many face marks are involved. But um, yeah, overall, that was a big help, and oh, oh good luck. Assembling all the models you'll ever need. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, anyway, should, should probably get back on topic. Uh, yes. That's Dunbon Dun- over there. Dunbon time. Tell us about Dunbon, dude. Yeah, why'd you make him? Dun- what do you want to do with him? Why I made him. He fills a niche that is that really isn't filled in Spinati at present, which is male characters that are above the age of 25. Like You have Raynor, and I think you also have Bobobo. <laughs> None others spring to mind. And I made him because he is such a great character in his source material. You know, he's, he's, he's the guy you play the tutorial as, and then his arm gets messed up, and then you go play as Shulk, and then he rejoins the party much later, but, and he's like, okay, I don't have the use of my right arm, but my left arm is perfectly good. I'm going to continue fighting. He has a compelling character, because he has flaws. He's nearly consumed by revenge. Uh, but he overcomes it because he listens to his friends, his allies. And I just figured he he's a perfect fit for this kind of game because of his personality. The main issue was dealing with the fact that he has, you know, one arm is heavily scarred and nearly, like, completely limp. Not entirely, but mostly. So it was, I always, I always sort of see my new characters as a challenge to overcome. And his one was a really fun one to tackle. Writing wise, it was a like great change of pace to write a dude who just doesn't beat around the bush. He just goes straight for what he likes. Like there's no, there's none of this awkward messing around trying to, you know, the character stumbling over their words. No, Dunban is just direct. And that's a lot of fun to write. And I hope that in future I can find more characters like him to write. I really enjoy Dunban. I think he's a really good additional... Like, sorry, good addition to the roster. Uh, I really hope... That he, you know, I, I just really hope you keep writing him. I think like he does serve that niche. I think it's like good to have someone that's not just Leon that's kind of filling this niche. I he, definitely Leon, like like I said, Leon's a bit Leon's a bit younger, isn't he? He is. I think like even still, like it's it's really great to have Dunban on the roster, and I really do hope you kind of lean into it and do some other stuff. With it. Sorry, that's really vague. I really hope you do keep targeting <laughs> other characters with him. I think like what you started doing with Aqua, self-aggrandizing or not, like you gotta do it, dude. Just just do it. Just fucking go for it. Go balls deep, because I know Don Ban will. <laughs> hit on Maya. Hit on Jura. Just hit on Spinelon's characters. Hit on my I characters. I was gonna say, I'd, I'd appreciate getting more uh, replies yeah. from him. Just because talking to, well, well, first off, I'm a man and like a man that's a, a, a decent bit older than them, but also kind of mild mannered is is different enough to be interesting compared to a lot of the people they talk to. Be, because you know, like they're they're kind of wary of men, but also kind of re- like they they they've also been like a, a little conditioned to be like respectful of their elders, sort of. Uh, like I think something that I changed recently and I've been trying to make more of an effort to do is to like anyone who's like kind of older than 25 they always like say like Mr. or Miss huh. uh, it's going to come up with Robin too but like like, like with all their targets I think they call him like Mr. Dumbon mm-hmm. I will definitely check to see if there's anything I've forgotten to reply to and yeah we can keep that going I did have to consult with uh, former podcast guest Callie, uh, for advice early on for like, okay, how do I target other men? Because I myself am bisexual, but I have trouble articulating what I find appealing in dudes. But Dunban would have no problem articulating that, 
And so I had to ask for uh, Callie's input there. And then what did you come away with? I came away with a lot of just general things to focus on that aren't just, haha, nice, nice dick. <laughs> Ooh, nice cock. Nice cock, bro. <laughs> Yeah, oh, just in general, writing a character that's like... When, when are we going to get Kronk and Spinetti? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Right, writes himself. I like Don Bon overall, though. Yeah, he's As great. A, he, he's, he's got that... He's, he's got that niche. He's one of those characters that, like, just because of the demographics of the roster, he, he sort of fills a niche. On his own, uh, uh, being, uh-huh. you know, that, that mild-mannered, respectful, but kind of blunt and, and straightforward uh, type of guy, where he's, he's a little bit older and he's more confident, and he's uh, he, he makes his his feelings known. I just I, I just have to say that like writing a more mature character is just fun, and if any other devs listening to this are thinking about making a character that's like slightly older, more mature. And you have the idea and the means to do so, then just go for it. Like we have, we have very few like actual mature characters. We have an overabundance of anime schoolgirls. I don't think that's that's, a, that's actually a question. I, that's actually a question I have for you. Is like, how do you deal with that? Because like when I when I'm writing Leon, like I have to like really like attentively mitigate. So like, how do you have like Dunbar dealing with that? I mainly just use filtered lines for him to go like really hard on sexual compliments. If it's mm. just more generic dialogue, it's more just like ah, you look beautiful sort of lines. You don't you don't want to go too hard into it when like it could be a thirty year old dude literally just targeting an eighteen year old. That's the thing about high school girls, man. They <laughs> get older and they stay the same age. <laughs> I'm, getting a, I'm getting a little bit of those feelings myself as I, as I start to creep towards 30. Or it's just like, well, I guess I'm just yeah. going to be that creepy old guy with like cigar in his mouth looking at like... Most of my characters like are written in their 20s. I think Natsuki is the only one who's like actually 18. Fuck, fucking, fucking 14-year-old anime girls like, that's a fine piece of ass. Yeah. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> got I mean, you know, guess that's just what my life is now. <laughs> sucks. I mean, I it sucks. I I remember, uh, you know, Maya was older than me when I met her. She was like cool older sister, and now, uh, now now she's. Uh, I'm quickly. I'm fast approaching the her falling out of the half your age plus seven rule. <laughs> sucks, man. Womp womp. But you know, I mean, as. You can try to be polite with with them if you want, but really, I don't think you need to wring your hands about it too hard. Like, yeah, fucking, I mean, it's 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 the conceit like, of the game. Whatever. They're all eighteen, bro. They're supposed to be here. Yeah, it's okay. You can be a cradle robber. I mean, if you don't want to make them into them, you don't have to. You can just write it like that. I, anyway, I use the school uniform tag. Kind of <laughs> circumvent that. Yeah. Like, Any other I, uh, final thoughts on on Dunban as a project, Nord? I think my own self critique would be that his I'm af- I'm afraid to touch his art ever again just because of how finicky the pipeline can be on a good day. So it's like in theory I could give him more poses, I could give him I could change what he already has, but what he already has is fine enough. It's carried me through you know, everything he has. In general, he's just one of those rare examples of, like, perfect personality, like, great fit for the game. Push it, I pushes agree. me Pushes me as a writer to write something I haven't done before, and I had so much fun doing it. I think, like, then the best service you can give him is just, like, you know, get him to 2000, right? Like, just go fucking, like, spend a weekend, lock yourself in your room, and go ham on targeted lines, man. <laughs> I'm not I joking. Have, I have, just, I think, I've done enough. Do what I do. Just 
shotgun a beer, pop the coffee in, go to, you know, get some prescription amphetamines and just write, you know, write all your lines. Easy. I, I have how many spinati projects are the product of, of substance abuse? Uh, less than you'd expect, more than you'd really believe. I did go, you know, self indulgent between him and Aqua. There's even special dialogue for if it's just the player, Dunban, and Aqua, which is fun. Even though realistically, no one's going to see that but me. Hey, player, you want to watch me bang this super hot blue bombshell? <laughs> Dude, fuck it. No, fuck no, I'm gonna do Go it. Go for it. Do it. <laughs> oh, if, if, I, if I didn't have to touch. Want to see me do it again? again? <laughs> uh, uh. Okay, well, uh, continuing this, this podcast's emerging trend of just old ass Christmas cakes. Can't believe. Whoa. I mean, what are doing it here at the strip poker game they're in their 30s it's ridiculous we have nico robin from one piece who is i think about the same age as dunbon i think they're both 30. i could be wrong on that but she is also very very calm very cool very collected and very fun very polished character i think we can all agree she's uh, one of the best most recent additions metal always does good work we don't really need to tell him that but she she had a bit of a tumultuous dev history he wasn't really happy with her reception at first but uh he eventually came back to the project and and pushed her forward and i think even though she started out really good he he made uh some from further improvements and now she's definitely a, a great addition nor i think both she and dunban have like their age as 30 which is like that exact that super specific turning point for a character in fiction god being, like, i fucking no hate this young adult I'm celebrating oh, my birthday. Old anime old age. Yeah, God. Mm. I'm celebrating my birthday and like like between this week and next. And it's just it's like, you know, you say that oh 30 is that's code for he was born on a leap day. 30 is this turn you know, 30 is this turning point. And I'm like, uh <laughs> Well You know what I mean? It's like it's this super specific, okay, they're not a young adult anymore. Yeah. Yeah. 30's not old, but you're officially not young. You're not, you're not a child yeah. anymore, or you shouldn't be. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. 20 year olds are not children, dude. <laughs> Early 20s, you're basically just, you're, you're a fully grown child. Late 20s, you're no, an I, adult. I, I, no, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to drag on the podcast runtime and, and go against this narrative. Okay, just because you don't know what to do with your life doesn't mean you're not an adult. Fucking grow up. I think I think that's fair. Okay, I think you have to take responsibility for yourself. I mean, I think like the idea of like calling someone a child in their twenties is not like as insulting as you think. It's just kind of like it, it's more of like you're not on the course for life that you've set for yourself just yet. Not that you're not able to do so. Pretty much. You know? That's 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 all I mean, right? It's like it's the biggest difference when you like kind of cross that thirty threshold is your body doesn't work the way it used to. And it's like, it's really frustrating because like, you'll be like, oh, I used to be able to just do this. And now you're like, fuck, why am I so tired? Hammer down amphetamines. Well, no. Honestly, like I, you know, it's like, I'm not trying to hijack the subject, but like I was talking to my doctor. I'm like, can I just like get some extra testosterone? And it's like, they're like, why? I'm like, I want to transition. And I'm like, and, and then they're like, what do you mean? You're already, you're already a male. And I'm like, well. I want to transition from male to alpha male. And I also just, <laughs> not, I just want to put on muscle mass without any challenges. Can I have steroids? And it, you know, anyway, long story short, it did, did not work. But they gave me other better drugs. transition to sigma male. I want to no. become a, a reploid. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> probably I talk about uh, Nico Robin and her fat fucking tits. Yeah, we, we, we should talk oh, about yeah, Nico Robin and her fat tits. It's great. Nord, what do you think about Tits McGee over here? Oh, yeah, Namas, you probably hate this character, don't you? No, I think I actually really like her. I think I like <laughs> of like Metal like Metallitar has never made a bad character. Like, yeah. Corona's easily my favorite because, like, obviously, and then Nico Robin's pretty good. I like, like, I like Dami a lot, but Nico Robin's really cute. Okay, well, let's let Nord go first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it does show that Metalator has a certain love 
for like one piece as a series and the specific characters from it, which probably fit right into his own like personal, you know, turn ons, which is fair enough. Just another really all around great character from him. For his for the sponsorship of Nico Robin, I went really hard and like how like super niche specific situations that she should talk about because I think Metallitar really wanted to push himself like really push the standard of quality that other people are holding him accountable to as well as how much he himself cares about his own standard of quality and I can respect that I'm just worried that he might burn out if he holds himself to too high of a standard doing this again I don't know is there a fourth One Piece character that would perfectly fit in with the other three I don't know Metal's motivation has always kind of come and gone sort of like a phoenix burning out and rising from the ashes he's he's disappeared for months at a time before and and with the quality of work of his work I, I just hope that he I, I just hope he doesn't feel obligated to do anything in particular. Yeah. I hope he just like works yeah. on stuff that he that he likes and he wants to see. Definitely. Yeah, I would hate. He, I mean, he's totally earned it. I would hate to feel that he's doing anything like he he goes above and beyond for his characters, and I would hate to think that he's doing that out of some sort of feeling of obligation. Like I would hope that he's giving her all of these unique hand drawn, you know, back view, three quarter view poses. Because he wants to, rather than feeling like he has to, because he's done it already. I, I would, I legitimately would struggle to come up with anything to complain about that isn't incredibly nitpicky, and may also just be me being ignorant of Robin's actual personality or One Piece like stuff. Anything would feel really nitpicky with a character like this. Where it's just like everything feels like like not ca- like not done just casually be- because Metallitar is great, but I think Metallitar is great as a dev because he puts this work in. He puts the effort in, and you can tell. And it makes me feel bad that his target audience and the all the f- feedback reports we're cursed with are just demanding more and more or are people trying to role play as whatever Luffy or someone <laughs> else I don't know if you're, if you're listening to this metal I think you did a great job once again Agreed. and you should be proud in what you've done you must yeah, I mean, I like I said, I think Perona remain like I, I'm very much like a skew person when it comes to reviewing these. I think Perona's my favorite from Tally Target Project, but like I like Nika Robin a lot. I think she's very calm and balanced, and honestly, I think that gives him a lot more room to explore. Because like I think when you pick like the main character from these series, like you pick like the girl character you end up a little bit restricted because that character has to maintain like a lot of mass appeal. Whereas like someone like Nico Robin or Corona, you can just lean in and do what you want. And I think that's same, the same thing is true of like Chun-Li and Jury. But yeah, like I said, I don't think Metallica has ever made a bad character. Like I, I don't always agree with him on like design philosophy, but I think she's great. I, I do think that I have this like really like, I, I personally don't enjoy like the characters that like strip the bottoms first for, without like, a whole lot of cause. I think in her case, it's because like her titties are fucking ginormous and she needs to keep her top on. In which case, like, okay, sure. But that's it, really. Like, I, I think she's great. I really enjoy targeting her. I hope she continues to target other characters and we'll see what happens from there. I think having come back to K work recently and, and uh, making Mandra's default models I, or our updated models, I gotta say, like, you know, I've I've always looked to like uh, Metal's work as as sort of like a standout, like art wise, uh, and sort of a source of inspiration. But but like looking at it, thinking about it, 
Like it's it's not necessarily that like Nami and Nico Robin have like the most detailed like models of all time, right? Because they really don't. I'd probably give that honor to like like Neptune or Noir or something. The, these uh, like e- even here in this pose, you can kind of see like I can see the belts going into a towel, you know. Like it's it's not super exact and perfect, but it really doesn't have to be because his his strength really lies in the posing. And how he's always trying new things, you know, like the pose maker came out, he got right on it. Like he, he figured it out and he figured out all these unique and interesting ways to, to make new poses with it or, uh, you know, complex marker systems and like Nami remembering games. And, uh, so he's always trying new stuff, which I, I think is really to his benefit. And, and, uh, and he's pushing himself to like, whenever he gets the idea for like a new pose, he, he pushes himself to kind of draw all the custom assets for it. So and I, I think that's really where his strength lies. It, not necessarily like, like the model itself, but like what he does with it. Even though like the models are good, uh, they are good. They're they're very appealing on their own. But it's just like that's where he really goes above and beyond, and that's where his strength lies in, in that creative posing. And that's what I asked for uh, for her in a, in, in the uh, in my own sponsorship of her. Uh, I also like how he uh, he took the opportunity to design a marker system for her own uh, horniness. And, and sort of made her made it a little more complex in terms of what she likes. Uh, I, I, apparently, she likes manly men and uh, and sort of shy, embarrassed girls or or something along those lines. So I think she might get along with Dunbar. I'm not sure, but maybe maybe those two should target each other. Nico Robbins' testosterone is off the charts. She can't be stopped now. <laughs> Dunbar gets the the new uh, the new harem. Hmm. They do target each other a little bit. I've just got to keep it going. It's just hard to transition from their, like, fucking poneglyphs into, hey, what a, what a bang. <laughs> but uh, excellent work as always. Um, and all the criticisms I, I gave, I, I kind of gave my sponsorship, just little minor, like, the stilted dialogue here and there. But on the whole, yeah, there's there's very uh, little little to criticize. She's she's fun to target. She's she's fun to watch. Uh, excited to see what he does next. Because I, I mean, you you can just you can just tell you can you can feel the love for this series, uh, One Piece that he's really poured into into these three characters. You know, yeah. the the Street Fighter girls that he worked on was kind of like the testing ground for a lot of stuff, and so was Shante, but. With One Piece, you can you can just tell how much he he loves it and how much he wants to uh, make these girls express themselves in different ways, and and I, I really connect with that. Are you ready? We finally get we we're like half an hour into this podcast. We got to a character that's in their twenties. <laughs> <laughs> My God, who could it be next? It's Cheryl, also known as Heather, from Dead by Daylight, also known as Silent Hill. Amazing, made made by the the wonderful crab fried rice. Yeah, crab fried also rice, also known as Napsu. And I I totally fell like hook line and sinker for that. She was just like smurfing. I don't know why, but listen, I'm not that I'm not I'm not looking with that critical of an eye on like newcomers. I'm just like, oh, a, a white name, cool. I'm glad. There's always so it's kind of disappointing in that way <laughs> because it was like I'm I'm excited to see like new you know, new uh, devs uh, come out of the come out of nowhere and, and make a super good project. And when it was revealed, it was Naps. who's like, well, well, I guess that's why. Well, she's good. womp womp, you know. At least we got Nagatoro from a new dev. That was actually, that was the real dev. Yeah, Na- Nagatoro is just like fucking busted OP. Super good. Nord what, do, Nord, what do you think of Cheryl? I think she's another like super solid addition to the roster. I really like her. Overall, I think she's really good. That whole, like, experiment with the whole shrimp fried rice identity. Interesting experiment. Um, it was Blue Jay that made the model in the end, wasn't it? It was, yes. Great work with the art as usual. Blue Jay is always top form. I don't... What, what is her actual name? Is it Cheryl, or is Heather the real name? Her real name is actually Cheryl, but she goes by Heather because they're being stalked by a cult. It's... it's so, so, uh, 
the lore is convoluted. The long story short is like Cheryl. There was like an orphan named Cheryl that was Harry Mason's daughter. And then she got like, she was like half of like someone else's soul. And then she like got returned to Silent Hill. But then there was like a new baby that was like the fully reincarnated for anyway. It's, it's very complicated. I'm used to convoluted lore. Yeah. Good stuff. Hashtag Xenoblade moment. More like more like Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts, Hearts moment. Kingdom Hearts. Z- Xenob- <laughs> Xenoblade and story is usually pretty straightforward. That's actually a hilarious. <laughs> that's actually a hilarious like conversation topic of like Aqua. I don't know if Cheryl and Aqua interact <laughs> at all, but just like Cheryl and Aqua, like Aqua just sitting down being like, "So tell me about your universe." It's just like the super convoluted lore dump. It's like, "Oh, okay, I get it. This is what I've been through." And then they just kind of go back and forth. And it's just like, "Wow, you basically yeah." It's like, "Oh my god, you're so strong." Wow, you know, kind of thing. I don't know. Aqua can relate to being trapped in hell for a decade. Yeah, as you do. I feel like from Cheryl, I would want more targets to characters that aren't Leon. <laughs> targets Dwight a lot, I think. Mm-hmm. They're both Dead by Daylight uh, people, aren't also, they? Also, like, she targets the fuck out of a dude. I am like. I have heard so many conversations like about like, oh Cheryl and Austin, I should do this. I'm just like, I I I good, do it. <sighs> Targets Jura a lot apparently. Why Asuna? Oh, I I never I always had a hard time targeting Naps' characters. Like we kinda like didn't vibe or I guess I I thought we didn't have a lot in common, but for Cheryl they they really managed to hit it off. Maybe it was just the maybe it was just the smurfing. So we're going in with a fresh mindset. But we, we all, uh, she's got like full set of lines with uh, all, all three of my girls. Wow. I update and uh, totally organically. Uh, and, and by that, I mean, it was my, my idea. I, I had a, got a custom pose where uh, Jura basically like forces her into a bear hug. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Because Cheryl is all like kind of mopey and and awkward and like oh you know like I don't feel super good. It's like no fucking feel good about yourself right now, goddamn it. And then she just hugs her. And these big old titties. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of it's the new Natsuki hug, made with the pose maker. Oh my god. Cheryl does have the Cheryl does have the Sundari tag. Watch out, Nat. Like Natsuki. It's a little wonky at the moment uh, of this recording. Because I'm I'm gonna clean it up eventually with her with her art update, but yeah, she hugs her. Uh, cute. Yeah. So besides like targeting Leon, any other thoughts from you guys? Like for me, it's kind of like I actually don't think I engage with Cheryl too deeply. Besides like Leon stuff, but it's like it's you know name an amass you know name a Napsu character interacting with Leon. Like it it's not that rare for me i guess at this point um yeah i think i think she's good i think she could pr- definitely use more just like future proofing on lines and stuff like that i think seeing her interact with more characters is always a good idea but that's kind of the only feedback i have i mean the model is really cute the character is really interesting i it's it's like she's like the most normal character that like naps has ever made. And I think that's maybe why she interacts with Spadeon's characters better. There is one small issue I have spotted just looking at her file. Mm. She has a butt pose and doesn't use it. Fucking heresy. (laughs) Well, she uses it in the hug. Yeah. I think she'll eventually use it. Probably. Who does she? Who does she? Who does she hug? Jura. Jura. Trying to spin on. She she is super cute, and I like her. And Napsu even uh, thanked me for that little uh, tidbit of advice I gave last time about uh, using the inner thoughts because she's like a survival horror character who would oh yeah pick up objects and be like hmm I have some internal dialogue about this mundane object in the room. Now, now the killer is going to slash my throat in the next one, but a good thing I've auto-saved. Uh, 
But yeah, she she's got like the mostly like normal girl just trying to hang out, have a good time, but like the but also like the layers of like supernatural and like inner like literal inner demons coming out that she's trying to wrestle with and she keeps thinking the whole thing is going to turn into a nightmare and it's it's sort of endearingly cute. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because you know everything's gonna be fine for her, and you just want her to have a good time, and you want to give her a hug. Good thing it happens. But yeah, out of all of uh, Napsu's projects, this has got to be one of my favorites. And I, uh, I hope she keeps getting updates. Nice, neat. Don't you think blondes have more fun? Where's the gif? Where's the gif? You know who's not having fun? Hmm. Dwight. Dwight. Oh no, Dwight, Dwight, yeah, poor Dwight. <laughs> Dwight Fairfield. No. Cal Callie write a Callie write a like a like a confident ma- like Callie <laughs> don't write a inconfident Shy male character boy. with glasses challenge impossible difficulty. <laughs> like I want I want we like, talked about how, how how typecast Callie was. Dude, I want Callie I'm to come in with just like the most like I want Callie to come in with like Chris fucking Redfield. And then just like want to bang everything that moves on the roster. Pulse optional Sakura, bangable. Saki ZLS, bangable. Saki Yoshida, you better fucking believe Chris is continuing the bloodline. Uh, he doesn't need. Yeah, anyway. Is, is that next for him? I, I don't know. Chris Redfield? Dude, I, I don't fucking well, know. You'll have, to, you'll have to work with that, Mr. Leon, won't you? I oh dude like if, like like explicitly if Callie writes Chris Redfield I will fucking commit hard to the like the cal like the Chris the Leon mean? banging. Uh, I don't I don't think Callie's a fan of that because he doesn't want that to be the only joke people make. No, but I no no Leon and Chris banging. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yes, that's not going to continue the bloodline. It doesn't have to. Oh, uh, nor nor what do you think, Dwight? We talked about him on the on the last set of uh, of episodes, but when he was on testing, and now he's made it to Maine already. He really stepped yeah. up and, and became the leader, but he's still not having a good time because he's not blonde. <laughs> uh, the elf costume. He's never had a good time in his entire life. Look at this poor man. The elf costume was really good. Um, Callie coming out with another absolute banger character. I want to highlight. A, an important like contrast here between Dwight, who has you know he's got a little bit of a gut, and it's done really well. This contrasts directly with Anatoly, who is uh, super skinny. <laughs> well, I mean, it, there there's not a lot of meat on those bones, if you know what I mean. Oh. You know, I think actually. I don't think Dwight and Anatoly actually talk to each other as much as they could. Like, Callie, if you're listening to this, be more self-indulgent. 100%. I want, I want, I want, I want Dwight and Anatoly to talk to That's each other. That's just going to be the picture of like the two spider Man pointing at each other. <laughs> I really appreciate the, all the work Callie does, especially given he's like been helpful with other people making male characters and with his own he he's got it's like you see shy boy with glasses but even that they're all like very unique and different and it doesn't feel like he's just writing writing the same character so i guess it's surface level stuff that's similar and he's done a great job at making dwight stand out and I really appreciate characters like Dwight. I like playing with him. I refuse to play his game of origin, though. Play Dead by Daylight, Nord. No. Join us. If, if they add... How come you don't want to play? Because I've heard about the community. However, if they add fucking Springtrap as a killer, I'll play what's, it. What's wrong with the community? <laughs> Just dodge the community and play with, like... <laughs> Fanatic people, it's easy. What's wrong with the I, community? Oh, dude, it's like it's, oh, it's, no. it's it's not the worst community that's out there, regardless of what anyone says. But it's what is it's, it just like weird and degenerate? Like no, well, yes, but yes, it's, and that's, quite demanding from what I hear. So it's like it's horror movie aficionados, which tend to be pretty like exacting. Let's say 
but in different ways amongst their own community. But it's also like an asymmetrical horror game, meaning like it's inherently unbalanced and people can't hang. So people are people are real salty all the time for reasons that are maybe not that valuable or interesting. I have given the warning that if I do start playing Dead by Daylight, I'm not going to care what the etiquette is. I will camp. I will stalk the same survivor over and over without remorse. Don't play killer. Just play survivor. Easy. No. I need to be killer. <laughs> I, like, I, like play, I like playing is, killer. Is, is this like versus Saxton Hale or something in TF2? Because I played that. Yes, kind of. Uh, yeah, the killer, the killer cannot be hurt by the survivors. Okay, so what do you just have to like wait him out? You have to like ru- like you have to run and complete objectives to escape, but like the killer can kill you, kind of thing. If the killer has to follow a ritual where like he has to put you on a meat hook multiple times to kill you, then the like, survivors can rescue you from the hook, and you can impede the killer using wooden pallets that you put in the way or flashbang them or the like and you have all these like original characters like Dwight or Susie mm-hmm. Susie's one of the killers or Meg don't forget Meg who? shit dude we have a ton of dead, dead by daylight characters especially if you count the crossovers yeah Dwight the only one on me it's, it's, like, it's been like the sleeper hit for, for Spinati uh, something about being put on a meat hook just really makes people want to fuck them. Uh, honestly, dude, I think, like, dude, the DVD community is so fucking horny. It's, like, unbelievably <laughs> horny. The second someone puts, like, Danny Olsen into the fucking game, I'm just gonna, like, <laughs> throw my hands up and be like, you put fucking Ghostface, but it's not, like, scream Ghostface. It's just a guy that is Ghostface. I don't know, man. So we have three Dead by Daylight characters, and Dwight's the only one that made it to main so far. Wait, no, Meg was on main. Well, Meg before was on main. And was taken off. At the bottom. <laughs> Eternally. It's a good character, I think. Before, before the killer finally got her, the mods put her on a meat hook. Yeah. She, they gave her the hook. God, that's a good killer idea. The moderator. You're just like a fucking Reddit <laughs> Jenny. And just like your first ever. <laughs> <laughs> please add sex to dead by daylight I, i'm starting to get the impression that a lot of players just consider killing to yeah. be some kind of sexual act you do get penetrated multiple times and then you explode i know a lot about a game i don't even play they made a visual novel starring some of the killers oh <laughs> <laughs> although although spirit was very cute in that Anyway, can we get back on topic with uh, with Dwight here in Spinati? Yeah, Dwight, Dwight's great. <laughs> A plus, Cali. Any other thoughts? Oh, I wish I had more to say, but it's another case where I'd just be like gushing about him and not gush- gushing blood. Uh, well, we we talked a little bit about um, uh, expanding his his personality a little bit to focus more on the leadership qualities. At the moment, uh, Dwight doesn't seem like Cali's focus. Uh, he's been working on an, an Ignatz update, an art update that just went through that apparently has some <laughs> file capitalization merge conflict issues, but we'll get there. And also, uh, I guess, Chris Redfield. So we'll see if, uh, if Dwight becomes the man he, he's, he's destined to be. But he, he's got the potential. And even as he is now, as like the shy, nerdy guy, uh, you know, people like that. And, uh, and he yeah. does a good job with it. You should really tuck in his shirt. Or pull it out, you know, one or the other. Come on, pick a lane. <laughs> Tucked in, gang. Well, it's been a long catch-up session. Hopefully we can record these a little quicker in the, in the, in the future because we got some more to get through. But it's, it's been a long catch-up session. And boy, has it been a long testing session for our last character who has broken all records for amount of time on the testing roster, I can't tell you how many times I just kind of assumed that she was on main and in the game because from the very start when she came on in like 2020, 
She was already fucking incredible. P- possibly the most detailed model in the entire game. I don't know how the fuck he did all this gradient shading and shit with only 99 slots <laughs> of like ribbons and, and crap. My god. It's Neptunia. The eponymous Neptunia from, from, Neptun- from Hyperdimension Neptunia. Or, or it's Neptune from Hyperdimension Neptunia. A character who predated Noir from her series, but Noir so, uh, lapped her uh, far and away and, and made it to the game first and has, been on the, and, and has been on the main roster for a long time. And Neptune finally, finally made it. And thank God, because if there was a character, I can't think of a character more deserving, who's been more deserving of the status for, for longer. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that Nutty finally got it done. I'm sure he has other stuff going on in his life, but this is a character that really, that really deserved it for a long time. You know, she's she's the head of a popular franchise. She looks great. She's fun. She's uh, she's quirky. She's cute. I pretty much said my piece on her already, but she required a lot of introduction because it's important to remember how how monumental this was. Nord, what do you think of Neptune? It's crazy for me to like think back and I realize the testing stay was literally like. Just just shy of a thousand days. Yeah. It's weird for me to think that she has been on testing longer than I have been part of this community now. Which is you know, over two years. It's it's honestly just been like not really overstaying her welcome, but it's definitely a case of nutty was probably preoccupied IRL and obviously there there shouldn't really be a rush to get off of testing, you know, as soon as possible if you need the time. It's good to see her having, you know, finished her sponsorship goals. I just hope that this isn't the stopping point for her. She's in a good spot now. But I feel like I could be like wrong about this. But it feels like she may have been on testing for so long and not really caught up with a newer batch of like people she targets to the point where like there's a lot of the main roster she doesn't interact with directly or other or oh no directly indirectly would be filtered lines and stuff and I think she has her fair share of those. So in general, I just hope Nutty doesn't stop where she currently is. Like, even if they're gonna work on more projects, I hope Neptune gets you know some more attention. She has like a good amount of lines, but I do think that you know the biggest thing is just like this lag of like interactions. I mean, it's it's kind of like it would be great if she interacted like really deeply with Noir, which. I think she does. But there's not like, you know, any forfeit dialogue between them. There's like actually just very incomplete stripping between the two of them. So I think it would be great if she was like just as connected with Noir. And I think there like I think there's like a lot of circumstances to be mined there, basically. Mm-hmm. That's it though. I think she's great. I just would love to see her kind of like like this is kind of some advice just from someone who's been around like been around this a long time for developers you don't have to be like 100% on top of things 100% of the time but if you're juggling multiple characters or you know responsibilities in real life whatever you want to do right it helps to have like a couple topics that you can come back to and i think when it comes to a character like neptune or uh, they rely from the previous cast like it, it's just really helpful to be able to bang out a bunch of content really quickly, kind of vanish and then come back to it versus like doing nothing at all. Like if you got to do it in bursts, do it in bursts, but make the bursts meaningful. I would say. Hmm. Nep- Neptune has a ton of lore to draw from. I it's, it's one of those series that you look at it and you can't even like comprehend the structure of like, what game came out when yeah. and for what? Oh yeah, no, Hyperdimension and Neptunia is just like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, so I don't think there's any there's any uh, 
lack of, of reference material. It's it's really just what he wants to do for the future. And you know, even if he can't work on her anymore at all, just just finally finishing the project is is, is just so much more satisfying. And it's a shame because you know she she's been there so long that it really just kind of feels like uh, you know a, a, any kind of hype died out a long time ago. But that being said, it's 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 nice to to, to once again see her. I'm 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 glad that we're it's the kind of thing where you can just put it to bed and say yes, this this, this contribution is finished and she's and she's very good. She's always been good. Yeah. You know, any 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 praise I had for her is. is that you know, from three years ago, still holds true. It, it, it's the same as it, what it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she was she was good then. She's good now, and and she she blew us all out of the water even back then. Please give her a try. But uh, I think we've gone on long enough. Just like her her testing stay. So uh, Namas, nor do you have any final comments? We we've caught up on the main roster for now. I'm sure by the time we record again, there will be <laughs> ten ten more lined up because we can just never get out in front. But any closing thoughts? I think I want to say just just general advice: never make a character because you feel obliged to make them. Especially if it's a case of ah, this series is currently very popular and a lot of people want this main character i'm going to make them because i sh because like they should be made make a character you really like and care about and if you happen to like and care about a character that is outside the sort of norm of what you think spinati is then ask for help and advice because that's how that's how we get characters that, you know, break, that fill uh, niches that are currently barely looked at. That's how we get people like Callie making characters that he really likes and that fill different niches like, like, uh, like Dwight and Anatoly and even Ignatz. Yeah. No, no. Never be afraid to ask for advice and make the characters you want to make. Hundred percent, and you know that goes kind of just to say, like the community here is like super welcoming and really happy to engage with whatever. But if if you don't make content you yourself want to make, you know, even if you only want to make it for a little while, it's hard to get invested. But definitely keep stuff coming. Like there's. It, you're into something there's lots of people that probably are into something and just you know there's lots of support out there make stuff that's fun and people will come to it the community is really good just engage with them where you can and the more stuff you make of your specific niche the more other people will come along and add to that niche just like how the the creator of Helltaker made the game and released it for free so that people would draw more art of demon girls in suits. Brilliant fucking guy. My, my personal message for your takeaway is that if you, uh, you should just make more shit because then you have more opportunities to come on the podcast because you have a, a slot on the agenda. <laughs> That's something you made so you can be like Nord and show up uh, four times in a row. Although we love having you, Nord. You're welcome anytime. Thank you. That is going to conclude episode 67 of the of the newer, shorter uh, Strip Poker Night at the Inventory podcast uh, sessions. Hope everyone in, uh, uh, enjoyed themselves. That takes care of main roster. Next uh, recession, we'll try to focus on some of the main roster or the testing roster additions. So a, a little bit more in depth. Uh, you know, fewer characters, but uh more depth on, on each of their sections and we'll, we'll get to some, we'll get to some characters that uh, had some unfortunate timing that they, they were left out of last recording and now this one. So they're, they're going to be pretty delayed, but you know, better late than never. So thank you Namasp for coming on. Thank you Nord. And, uh, and uh, yeah, thank you all for listening. Thank you to everyone on the dance floor, on the dance floor, on the dance floor. Now stop.